bugs can be found in our rivers, creeks and wetlands. Learning to identify bugs is a great way for kids to engage in their local environment. Today, we're going to teach you how to collect a water bug sample and run a session with your students, plus all the equipment you'll need. Water bug investigations can be used to investigate ecosystem health, water quality and what you can do to protect your local environment. At Melbourne Water, we use water bug data to contribute to ongoing research and for our waterways management to protect these tiny creatures. Before we get started today, let's explore what macroinvertebrates or water bugs really are. Water bugs are small animals that live in the water, have no backbone and are big enough to see with the naked eye. They are fascinating to study and are a really important part of the food chain. Some water bugs eat plant materials and some are predators that will eat other water bugs. Many are eaten by much bigger animals like platypus, birds and fish. Water bugs can help us to learn about how healthy the waterway is because not all water bugs can live in dirty or polluted water. For example, lots of freshwater snails, like the introduced species Visa acuta, can often be found living in waterways with degraded or poor water quality. Others, like caddisfly larvae, are sensitive to pollution, so they are often found where there is good water quality. They're also fascinating to observe up close, with many species making cases out of plant materials or silk. If you see a crawling stick, you've probably found one. Now that you know more about them, let's learn how you can collect and identify them. Firstly, we need to find a site to collect bugs. Wetlands are a great place to collect bugs, especially in places where there are lots of aquatic plants around the edges. Spring and autumn are the best times to collect water bugs. Look for a nice safe site to sample from or even a boardwalk with good access to the water. Make sure you always take someone out with you so you're never sampling alone. Once you get to your site, always do a site safety assessment to make sure that it's safe and never sample in bad weather and avoid getting in the water. To collect your water bugs, you will need a fine mesh net and about a five litre bucket. We're using a net similar to a swimming pool cleaner, but you can also use handheld nets as long as they have a fine mesh. For sorting bugs, you will need white trays, ice cube trays, spoons, pipettes and magnifying glasses. To identify and record bugs, you can use WaterWatch identification charts, water bug keys and data sheets. When collecting bugs on site, use your net to sweep through the water and aquatic plants. Make sure you sample all habitats present at your site. Try to avoid getting too many leaves and twigs and algae in your sample as it will make it difficult for you to see your bugs. Once you've collected your sample, put it into a bucket with water from the site. Now you're ready for the kids to identify the bugs we've caught. Set up your trays and equipment and divide your sample between the sorting trays. Have your students look for as many different bugs as possible. They should put water in the ice cube trays and then use spoons or pipettes to put different bugs in different sections of the tray. Spend up to 20 minutes looking for bugs Aim to get as many different animals as possible. Students should work together using the identification charts and keys to find their bugs and then record them on their data sheets. Magnifying glasses can be used to look closely at the animals to help identify them. At the end of your session, return your bugs to the waterway you collected them from. Make sure you clean your equipment and wash your hands before returning to the classroom. Back in the classroom, you can use your macroinvertebrate data to learn more about the bugs that you collected and the health of your local waterway. A healthy waterway will have a wide diversity and abundance of water bugs. You may even want to track the changes that occur in your waterway, especially if there have been positive improvements like tree planting in the area. Getting involved in protecting Melbourne's waterways and teaching others is a great way to contribute to the health of all of Melbourne's waterways now and into the future. To learn more about waterbugs and to access teaching guides, please visit the Melbourne Water website.